Hi, this is Victoria Nolley and here with me again is Professor Volker Robin from the Center for Energy, Petroleum, Mineral and Policy at the University of Dundee. In our previous videos, we talked about climate litigation, we also talked about climate change, region energy initiatives, uh, issues to do with sustainability in the energy sector, and also we talked about, yeah, actually that's what we talked about. In this video, we want to focus on international energy law, but before we start, I'd like Professor Volker to briefly introduce himself. Yes, I'm uh, Professor Volker Rubin, and uh, I, I'm a professor here of energy law and global regulation at the center uh, in Dundee. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, in our previous video, we talked about region energy initiatives. In this video, we want, we want to focus on international energy law and uh, international energy law and also international energy initiatives. Could you please give us an overview of international energy law? What is it about? Yes, uh, international energy law is, is broad. It concerns everything, all, all law that has to do with energy. And that means it, star, it covers uh, all stages of uh, the energy value cycle. It starts with the production of energy, uh, then with the transmission, it's concerned with the transmission and transportation of it, and finally with the consumption. So you are looking at law that uh, explains uh, how um, energy is produced from renewable energy sources uh, or from uh, fossil fuel. Uh, that is part, and you have um, elements of investment protection, contract making here, liability. Then you have rules that the law that deals with the uh, grids, the electricity grids and the pipelines that transport the energy. Uh, but also actually um, uh, very interesting new developments about LNG um, uh, transported via vessels and the infrastructure you need for that purpose. And finally you talk about uh, energy efficiency, uh, the way of, uh, of saving uh, energy. That is part of energy law just as much and the consumers. So consumer uh, of uh, the laws that deal with the consumption of energy uh, and smart meters, for instance, all of this is part of international energy law. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the brief introduction. Uh, so there are also international energy initiatives besides the regional ones we talked about. And then my question is, given the fact that different, um, different countries face different energy challenges mm. or should I say different regions because if I'm to look at sub-Saharan Africa we have different energy challenges compared to Europe uh, as it's more of an issue of energy access most people yeah. don't have access to electricity and then in Europe it, I think it's more of an issue of energy security mm. you already have access but then you need to secure the energy you have and so doesn't that make our international energy initiatives uh, ineffective because mm -hmm. they're dealing with different problems but they want to deal with them um, in the same way if I should say yeah so. no I, I think that's that is absolutely uh, the right question um, now I would say that effective international um, energy cooperation and initiatives mm -hmm. uh, must be tight tailor-made to the specific uh, needs uh, of each part uh, of the world so you have Indeed, as you mentioned, you have in, um, in, the, uh, in, in Europe potentially different challenges uh, than, uh, for instance, in Africa. Nevertheless, in, it's the same principle. You need, everybody is better off, if I can put it this way, uh, through international cooperation. Everybody does better in the end. Now, uh, the job of us and of others is to design policies that actually work on the ground and that actually do help uh, states make a better effort. Um, and for instance, one thing we do very, uh, very effectively here at the center is to think about uh, how to make sure that in Sub-Saharan Sub Africa, um, but also in other parts of the world, states profit most uh, from the transformational pro uh, potential of their natural energy resources. So uh, taxation, for instance, is an issue that needs to be addressed so that states and, and the people in the states actually do profit and that they do not, you know, that the, prof that the, the, that the riches, that the um, natural riches aren't siphoned off, so to speak, into other parts of the world. That is a challenge uh, there. Uh, in, um, across, another one, just to give you an example, is 
uh, something we are thinking about is how to ensure that um, across Eurasia in this case there is possible interconnection between uh, sources of energy produced in for instance China that comes uh, to Europe uh, and that is uh, something that the, the, uh, the energy charter is looking at and that okay. is the purpose of this. Uh, in other parts of the world um, uh, financing is required uh, to bring about uh, development and um, ideally a move towards more uh, sustainable renewable energy sources, natural solar, uh, wind, uh, hydro. All of this is, uh, I'm involved in a project that concerns um, Africa about the effective transboundary cooperation between states using their hydro energy. Uh, it's often completely, it's not, it's not done as, as well as it could be and to how to mobilize the financing for this. Um, mm. All of these are initiatives that come under the big umbrella of international cooperation. All right, uh, thank you very much. That marks the end of our second last video. In the next video, we shall talk about electricity markets. Stay tuned.